Hi, so welcome to the pre-show. I am Rosie. This is Zach. I nearly introduced myself as Zach. This is Rosie. <laughs> um, we are happily married. We love yeah. this place. We've been, uh, we've had the privilege of being able to help host here at Fresh Wind 2024 and serve alongside the team. And we have had an amazing time. It's been such a privilege. Hey, so I want to ask you, honey. What has been one of your highlights about Freshman 2024? Highlights? Oh, man, there's so many. Uh, I mean, a highlight for me definitely has been the opportunity just to be able to host. Mm. Um, I remember being out in that audience, oh, you yeah. know, a few yeah. years ago. And, and now being part of the team that gets to put this on is, is something that's really special to me. Yeah. Um, but also just uh, watching you know, the months of hard work just pay oh, off yeah. and yeah. watching uh, people come, you know, with testimony after testimony of how they're, they're encountering God. Mm. Um, and then even hearing about, uh, some stuff like years later, right. Yes, uh, of, of, of what course. God did at, uh, at a conference like this. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And of course, cause you have so much of a, you know, background picture of what's going on. So, so much more you'd appreciate, ah, uh, when yeah. everything runs smoothly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the amount <laughs> of awesome. uh, last minute, like of hair course. pulling, of pulling course. things together, you know, right at the last instant to make it work. And you, you always have to remember, like, it's at the God's end of the day, conference. most, yeah, it is God. Yeah, yeah, it is God's conference. And most yeah. people don't even see like some of the small things <laughs> oh, that, you totally. know, I'm tripping myself yeah, yeah. out oh, over, right? So what good. about you? What's your favorite part? Well, it's actually, it's fun being here. I've been to a few fresh winds. But I grew up in Australia, so I didn't grow up going to these conferences. I grew up going to, <laughs> I grew up going to, you know, youth conferences in Australia, on the east coast of Australia. And it's really cool to think, man, God really marked me yeah. and changed my life Definitely. in a lot of those conferences. A lot of times in the secret place, a lot of times running alongside community at church and uh, all those things. But I, I have, I have very significant memories that happened at youth conferences along the years in my teenage years and then being able to uh, lead as a youth leader alongside those yeah. two but now it's it's so exciting and encouraging looking at the youths youths <laughs> who <laughs> were who were in that position now like just burning and and just being uh, you know sold out for god and it's it's like it's beautiful to watch that happening and um, yeah, that's, that's probably been one of the highlights. It's actually kind of funny to think, if you think about it, these guys who are here at this Fresh Wind yeah. are going to be, you know, the leaders leading our kids when our kids are going, uh, you know, going through kids and, and youth and when they're in youth ministry and that kind of thing, like these are going to be the leaders who are raising up the generation that comes after that. If you kind of think that far ahead. So it is so beautiful seeing the father just encounter people. And as well, it feels so special to get to host some of the sessions and just know like when the father says he wants to encounter people, to see his face and hear his voice like he actually wants to do that and he's he's gonna do that and yeah. so it's been so exciting to see that and get to you know serve alongside people who are seeing that happen but also hear the testimonies of course which you were mentioning you had a you'd heard a testimony before um just before we started this what was yeah that? i mean we had we've we spent the afternoon kind of like uh, trying to capture a mm. whole bunch of those um and when just, are we going to be able to see those uh, <laughs> Well, I don't know, editing team, don't guys, know. when, when are we going to have scene. that down? Uh, yeah. yeah, probably probably within a few a few weeks. Yeah. We definitely want to get those out because those are <laughs> like, they're special. Oh, you know, man. when when you, you hear those things, you're like, oh, there, there's just, for me, there's just like a, a faith that just like builds inside of me. I'm like, oh, God did that for this person. You know, he can do it for me or he can do it for my sister. He can do it for my friend, mm -hmm. you know, and and... I just listening for me, like testimonies is the, the most precious time. Like I sit in whenever the school of ministry at the end of their thing, yeah. they're, they're doing testimonies. I sit in at the end whenever I can and I cry With like I'm a mess tissues. all the time. And yeah. guys, for me to, to cry, like that's, that is a big deal. I, I didn't cry for like many, many years, uh, growing up. I think there was like a span of like 12 years or something like that where I didn't cry, right. you know, and then now for me to cry. But anyway, I di diverge. Uh, we had a 
bunch of incredible testimonies. I just want to highlight, like, you know, a couple. Um, you know, we I think we already heard a, a little bit of Coles. Mm. And we had a, a few others like that where where it's just like having like first time real encounters, yeah. you know, with God, with the Holy yeah. Spirit. And and where you like there, there's no way uh, other way of like putting it, but like saying like, oh, you you are experiencing like, um, you know, a baptism of fire, you know, a baptism, a baptism, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Like when I had the opportunity of praying with, with Cole last night, you know, as, so as he was going through it and I was Come like, on. dude, you are like fully 100%, <laughs> you know, you it's are so describing exciting. what you are saying is going on. It's like, you're just Jesus. getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit right mm-hmm. now. And then hearing that happen with other people, <clears throat> you know, and another one that I just want to highlight, which I thought was like, amazing particularly because it's like coming like a year later like there's there's a year of this testimony being uh walked out and being successful as we had um i think his name was was uh, ryan and he said he came in and he said like i i was um last year i came to fresh wind and i had like a an eating disorder um and you know was it had been hospitalized was on like an eating plan uh, uh an eating plan all those kind of things that mm-hmm. are it's not like something that that it's something that was clinically diagnosed sure. right you know <clears throat> and then yeah. he had an encounter with god one of the nights while he was here and was just watching as god like took stuff out mm-hmm. put stuff in mm-hmm. took stuff out put stuff in And then went home, totally different person. Well, I mean, totally different person is like no longer had any totally, totally healed, like no more, no more struggles with food um, where like the, the turnaround was just like on a dime, unbelievable. Um, And uh, has lasted to this day. Like he, so he was here this afternoon, a year later testifying saying hey so this is what god did in my yeah. life yeah. one year ago today yeah. and i'm still yeah. um you know a walking testimony of yeah. that because that's what it's like that's what's that's it's almost like that's what's most important and it's not just the high watermark testimonies no. it's the every it's the every encounter because what's important is our hearts connecting to god and and this um giving our lives fully for him because he's given his life fully for us and being transformed and then changing the world. But it's not just the exciting things that happen, although we celebrate, celebrate those. Absolutely. It's like, we're actually here, you know, team Freshwind, we're actually here for the six month journey and the two year journey and the 10 year journey. Like we, this is actually something they say at the school of ministry. This isn't just for now. This is for you know, the process of discipleship and walking this out and seeing the Father transform lives and communities in the world. It's, it, you know, it's not just one weekend show, which is, I think, is one of the highlights as well when we, when we hear about these testimonies. Thinking a year later, this guy, like, still being able to say, God healed me then and, you know, how, you know God's going to do it. Like, oh, exactly. who else? Like, who else needs that? Come on, like it's, yeah, it's so cool. And, and then like, and then hearing what happens as a result of those testimonies, right? Where mm-hmm. like people li- go out from here mm-hmm. and say, and go and tell their friends and they're like, hey, yeah, you'll never exactly. believe what God did. And, exactly. and like, here's the proof of it happening. Yeah. And then next thing you know, their friend is coming out to Freshwind, yeah. you know, or coming out to a, another event or coming or out to Sunday, anything really. And they are now discipling somebody yeah. and bringing them along and i mean like we we had that happen with it with one of our friends yes, recently like this past yeah. september you know where they they invited somebody along and that person's life like they they gave their life yeah. uh, to jesus over the over Chats that conference home, yeah. and that person's life i think they're getting, yeah, they're uh, getting i think baptized she's getting tomorrow. baptized tomorrow yeah. See, you it's, know that it's person's so life is is forever changed yeah. and and she was talking about how um you know, I, I, it still boggles her mind how like she has the opportunity to be the first Christian in her family. Oh yeah. Right. And, and that decision has Man. completely changed the course of, yeah. of her, her lineage. Right. Yeah. So cool. So yeah. I mean, there's stories for days that we oh, could, sure. you know, deliberate over. It's so special. I want to know there's a lot going on. There's a lot to do. How do you, you know, stay centered and focused on the main thing, the one thing while you're here, you know, running events and running around behind the scenes? 
Great question. Um, <laughs> lots of planning beforehand, but no. Yeah, when it, when it, <clears throat> planning, planning does help, but yeah. when it comes down to it, is like we just have to remember why we're here. And ultimately, like, we're here celebrating what God can do. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not, mm-hmm. you know, it's not my conference. It's not our conference. It's not um, our church. It's, I just get to come along for the ride with whatever so God cool. wants to do, yeah, you know, so and, and I just have to be saying uh, my heart has to be open to what God is, is asking me to do. Yeah. And uh, it's not to be freaking out. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, as you're going through, just like making sure that you're taking time you know, to, Uh to really like center myself Mm -hmm. on God. Um, reading the Bible is a great way. Anytime I'm feeling like I'm getting worked, worked up Mm -hmm. or, or bothered by something is, is taking a moment to step aside and just focus my eyes on Jesus, like step back. Like literally sometimes I I will picture myself like leaning back into Mm -hmm. like the father's arms, Mm -hmm. um, and, and just being like, okay, nothing else matters. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, as long as I'm with God, yeah. it's all good, yeah. uh, you know, and then inviting people that I trust into that process, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, where, you know, if there's something that's that's frustrating me or, or mm-hmm. bugging me is going and having that conversation and saying, hey, actually, I do need help. Mm-hmm. You know, can I just talk this through yeah, with you? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And like I had I had a conversation like that with with one of my friends yesterday where I was like, hey, dude, you know, I'm just really frustrated right now. Mm-hmm. Can, do, do you have five minutes? Can we have a conversation? Yeah. And it yeah. was so um, grounding and uplifting for me. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when you have godly friends around you who can always point so you in good. the right yeah. direction <coughs> you know, that are yeah. listening to you and can say, you know, point you towards God at the end of the yeah. day, that's that's key. You know? <coughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you, you need some water? I need some water. Um, yeah, I was actually going to say that too, is like when I when everything feels right with God, that's when we're like, anything had happened like we're good now yeah you know and so it's like staying centered on that but also and these are some of the friends that we're making here at Freshwind too is like the is like getting to like having people who can like Edna mode you you know like thank you so much (laughs) (laughs) having like friends who can be like pull yourself together (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) you know like that's that's the they're the kind of people you want around you know pause yeah and I mean like as husband and wife, we're kind of like that for each other. I you love know? that for us. Dream team. Let's go. Three, five. Um, so, yeah. So, well, we have about a minute or two left. and um, Oh, man, that went really fast. Yeah. Well, we just want to pray for everyone before yeah. we get started, before we launch into it. God has great things to do. He's not done with you yet. It is the last session of day three, which means it's just the beginning of the rest of your life after Fresh Wind and living out the transformation that God's given us. So why don't we, why don't we pray for everyone and speak a blessing and jump into it? What let's, do you think? Let's do it. All right. Well, Father, we just uh, thank you for everything that you've done. Um, yeah over the course of this conference and what and we set our expectations high for what you're going to do yeah. here tonight um, and we just want to give you all the glory and mm-hmm. honor and praise mm-hmm. and I just ask right now that that for anyone that that is like holding out for something yeah. like God I really need to see you move in this way God that mm-hmm. they would experience breakthrough in their life tonight mm-hmm. Um, that you would just minister to to their heart um, and let them Mm -hmm. know that they are seen, known, heard, and valued. Um, And uh, we just bless you guys to have a fun time, an amazing (laughs) night, and a safe trip home. And happy Easter to everybody. (laughs) We'll see you down in the session in like, what is it? How many minutes do we have left? Six minutes, I think, something like that. Six minutes till the session. Six minutes. We got a <coughs> we got a motor on down. Hey, there. you know what we actually need to do? Sorry, digress. You know what we actually need to do next year? I want to create like a fresh wind survival kit. It's gonna have deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> number Amen. one, number one deodorant. <laughs> it's gonna have electrolytes because <laughs> no one's drinking enough water. Um, Bible journal. Who knows what else? We'll see. We'll have to. Uh, create that for next year that's that's going to be our next our next project social media yeah. idea what's your fresh wind survival kit that's a good idea it's a youth pastor it's Had a best us. friend it's a squishmallow a squishmallow yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> actually though we want to hear what your um 
what your freshman survival kit yes. is. So if you could hit us up that would be so cool. on Instagram yeah. uh, at CTF Toronto. Yeah. Or I think that's the best way to get hold of us, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm getting or, nods or, in the back. Or anything, here. you know, hashtag freshman twenty twenty four. Yeah. And um yeah, that'll be I wanna know what you can't go to freshman without. Also Stay tuned on ctftoronto.com slash fresh, fresh wind. Uh-huh. It's going to be a permanent link now for um, everything to do with fresh wind this year. So we'll be posting like testimonies and stuff, um, recordings and whatever up there as well. Yeah. And then for uh, next year, when ticket sales Hey-o. and as details start trickling out for Let's that, go. that's the place to find that's it. That's awesome. Yay. Awesome. All right. Well, enjoy the session. We'll see you in a minute.
Schwind, are you ready for the last night? I want to ask you guys something. I want to ask you guys something, all right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you guys have dinner? Yeah? Are you guys feeling full? I don't know. I thought, I thought you guys might still be a bit hungry. Who's hungry for Jesus? All right. Firstly, since this is the last night, we got to go all out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any of you that are standing in the back, I want you to come all the way up here. There's all this free space, so come running up here. Come on. I don't want to hear the no. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All of you in the back. Let's go to the front. We don't got all day. Let's go. So let me ask you again. Who's still hungry for Jesus? Who still wants to encounter God tonight? All right. Okay, before we get started, let's quiet ourselves down. Let's quiet ourselves down. Okay, can everyone close your eyes? We're just going to pray and invite Holy Spirit in this place. So Holy Spirit, we just welcome you to come and have your way tonight. Like Daniel said, and I know we're cheering and it's hype and everything, but honestly, Jesus, we're truly hungry for you. We have felt, you know, we've, we've, we've seen you move in power this weekend. And so Jesus, you know, we're, not, we're actually not satisfied. Like our hearts are hungry for more. And so tonight, God, I just ask that you would continue to stir up the passion, every good thing that you've been doing in our hearts. Would you continue that work tonight, God? And so tonight we turn our attention towards you. We look to you, Jesus. You're the only one that we want. You're the only one that we want, Jesus. And so we just say, King of glory, come and have your way on this place. You're so welcome here. And so we just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want you to do something for me. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, are you ready? Turn to your other neighbor and say, to see the impossible. Let's worship together. Fresh wind, declare with me. In all, all of this for you, glory. 
You're strong and I've witnessed it. You're constant, I've witnessed it. And I'm confident I see it again and again. You love and I've witnessed it. You heal and I've witnessed it. You save and I've witnessed it. And I'm confident I see it again and again. You're good and I've witnessed it. You're strong.
faithfulness of God How could I not respond My whole life is marked by the faithfulness of God That's why I know that you're worthy of all
Your way is better. Cause your way is better. Oh, 
You chose a road that led to suffering Nothing was spared to prove your love for me Oh, the mystery That your final breath became eternity What we had lost forever you redeemed mm -hmm. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna In the highest forever Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna Triumphant King The Lamb who was slain Who rose in majesty There's never a heart Beyond your victory You are the one That we are welcoming Oh, you are the one
Oh 
as long. Come on, sing it out. Hey, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. I'll praise cause I know, oh, I'll praise cause I know, God you're still in control, cause my praise is a weapon, it is more than a sound, hey. my praise is a shout, that brings Jericho down, as long as I'm breathing, come on, oh as long as I'm breathing, I've got a
Jesus, Jesus. This is all for you. We love to take delight and to take joy in the Lord. So Jesus, we worship you tonight. Would the joy of the Lord fill this house? We thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus a shout. You know, I was praying right before worship started and I was like, you know, Jesus, like, it's the last day of the conference, right? And the whole conference is called? See the impossible, right? And we've been really praying and talking about growing in faith. God, give us a fresh outpouring of faith. Help us to see the impossible. Help us to do that through you. And I was like, Jesus, what do you want to do on this last day? Like, do we just talk about faith and then just walk away or just take it to our schools? But there has to be an activation. There has to be something that we have to do. And it's crazy. Like, you know, I want to give you a verse, okay? We've read it before, but Matthew 17, 20 and 21 says, You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I told you the truth. If you have faith, even as small as a... You can say to the mountain, move from here to there. Nothing would be impossible. And you know, we've been singing so many songs about like faith, faith rising. How, what, like what could God do when there's a room full of people that have faith in him? And you guys remember how, I think yesterday we talked about turning on that switch of faith, right? Who here, who here turned that switch on? Let's go, come on. So, so instead of leaving the conference, going back to our schools, going back to our homes, and seeing the impossible done, why don't we start now? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. What I feel the Lord wants to do today, tonight, right here in this place, is bring healing. So I'm going to give you a second, okay? Think about it. I want you guys to, everyone in the room, just close your eyes. Now, it can be physical. It can be emotional. It could be mental. It might not even have to do with you. It could be someone in your family, one of your closest friends, someone at work. If you need healing, focus on that right now. If you're perfectly fine, but you know someone that needs healing, Think about them right now. Keep them in your mind. And while you're thinking about that, focus that switch, that switch that you turned on that says faith, the switch that says, I trust in the Lord, the switch that says, you know what? We can see the impossible being done. All right? So if it's something physical that you need healing for, with all eyes closed, place your hand where you need healing. What I really feel God speaking to is healing of asthma and healing of sight. God wants to restore vision and God wants to open up your lungs. It could be your vision or your lungs or someone you know, but just focus on that. I want you to really, really focus on that. Are you guys ready? Okay, you're gonna repeat after me. So make sure your hand's on that place that needs healing. If it's you're praying for someone, keep them in your mind and repeat after me. My healing belongs to me for what Jesus did on the cross and at the whipping. I receive my healing now I receive, I receive my healing now. My healing now. I, receive I receive my healing now. My healing now. Let's give Jesus a shout because of what he's going to do. <laughs> now, just remember, you know, we're leaving the conference tonight, sure. But we need to keep that switch turned on. 
you guys go back to school, you, you see something that you think is impossible. Who do you put your faith in? Jesus, right? Jesus, we pray for everyone here, God. We give ourselves over to you. We want to continue to see the impossible being done everywhere we go. Every step we take, whether it's into our schools, into our workplaces, into our friend circles, we want you to do the impossible. We don't want to do it alone anymore because we want to walk life with you. We put our faith in you and we want to see the impossible. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus another round. Come on. He is so good. He's so good. He's so faithful. If Okay, I just want to know, was anyone like, can you test out what we just prayed for? Like, if you can test it out, or if you already have seen a difference now and you've been healed, like, you know it. I've been healed. Can you raise your hand up really, really high? Let's go. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we believe that even during this session, as we keep going through this session, Jesus, we believe that you are continuing to heal in the room tonight. Amazing. Okay, you guys are welcome to go and take your seats. All right, while you guys are transitioning back to your seat, we want to do something very special that's very important. And we don't want to move on without having done this. We don't want to end the conference. We don't want to go home without honoring these people. So I would love the youth pastors and youth leaders in this room, if you could please come to the front. Youth pastors and youth leaders. And youth, I want you guys to honor these people, okay? They are the ones that brought you here to the event. So don't be shy. Youth pastors, youth leaders, come to the front. God has something for you in this moment. Thank you. Cheer them on, guys. These are people that helped you be able to be here. It's you, so good to honor our leaders. If you guys can spread out, just come on in, come on in, come on in. Everyone spread out, make a line. You can face the stage. All right, so what we want to do, we don't want to move on. We want to honor each and every one of you for, honestly, like following the call of God on your life. What you are doing is making a difference. And we know that it's not always easy. Um, we know, you know. Bro, it's never easy. <laughs> but it's a joy. It truly is a joy. And I know that each and every one of you believe that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be standing here right now. Um, and so, you know, I just want to... Um, Actually, I don't want to encourage you. I want Holy Spirit to encourage you tonight. Um, and so what we want to do is we just want to pray for you. We want to ask for, you know, fire of God to fall. We want the Holy Spirit to come and anoint you because we believe that, you know, this isn't a conference where we just go home, but we believe that there are youth in your youth ministries that are going to start stirring things up and they need you guys to be able to help lead them and to help guide them. And, you know, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit in you. And so youth, I would love for you guys I know this moment is not about you for a moment, okay? Just for a moment, one moment, it's not about you. <laughs> um, but we wanna pray for your youth leaders, so I would love for you guys to stay engaged and you guys can be praying. I would love for you to stretch out your hands, every hand in this room stretched out, and I would love for you to pray. On the count of three, we're gonna pray for your youth leaders ministry team just please come and pray for these youth leaders if you could just lay hands on them that would be amazing 
Okay, and on the count of three, I want you guys to pray, fire of God, fall. Okay? Are you ready? One, two, three. Fire of God, fall. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would come and you would fill up each and every one of these leaders that you have raised up for such a time as this. Any moment where you've been discouraged by what's happening in this generation and you say, how can I make a difference? You know, you, you look at a youth's life and you're like, what's going on, God? Holy Spirit, we just pray right now that you have marked each and every one of these leaders for such a time as this. And so Holy Spirit, I just ask that tonight would be a night that you mark them, that they would go out from this place, God, and they would be instruments and tools to stirring up revival in their cities, in their churches, in their communities, in their youth groups, God. And so we just pray, fire of God fall. Holy Spirit, come. Would you empower us, empower each and every one of them to help you do your will? And so, Holy Spirit, we just say yes to everything that you have for us. Yes to everything that you want to do in our youth ministries. If you're not in it, we don't want it. And even if it looks foolish, we say yes to following you. So, Holy Spirit, come. Fire of God, fall. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. I would love for you guys, like youth, don't stop. Keep your hands stretched out. This is a moment where, you know, we've been hungry for God to move. We're hungry for God to do something. You guys have been, you know, up here and you're like, wow, God, I want you to move. These are the people that are going to help to lead you in that. So I want you to stretch your hands out. And I would love for you to pray with boldness the things that you have on your heart for your youth ministry, the things that you want to see happen in your schools. I want you to stretch your hands out and I want you to pray for them. If you don't know what to say, just say, fire of God fall. So just all around the room right now, just activate that faith. Fire of God fall. We don't have to be the ones on stage leading what's happening. You're welcome. Fire of God fall. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, would you just seal up everything that you're doing in this room tonight? We're just going to let the youth leaders just and youth pastors keep receiving, okay? We're just going to let them keep receiving. Just do whatever you need to do. And we're just going to take a minute to play the video announcements. These past couple of days have been incredible. We are so thankful that you were able to make it to Fresh Wind 2024. Guys, it seriously would not be the same without you. We already have Fresh Wind 2025 in the works. It is happening on April 9th to the 11th, so please mark your calendars. And guys, don't forget to follow us at Catch the Fire Toronto, and also make sure you like and subscribe our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Catch the Fire Toronto. And we still wanna hear those testimonies, so if you haven't shared yet and you would like to, make sure you send us a DM or connect with one of our team members, or please share through catchthefire.com forward slash testimony and we look forward to hearing from you guys we now have a giveaway let's pass over to the school of ministry anyone who is joined to christ is a new being 
the old is gone and the new has come. Many of you have thought about Christianity and religion for a long time. Are you committed? Are you committed to Jesus Christ? There is so much power when hungry people get together in the same place for five months to truly become who God made them to be. <laughs> but there is a cost. Overcoming rejection. Choosing faith over fear. We have to believe it's still possible. We have to believe it's for you, for me, and it is for now. Jesus said you must be born again. Start with your hearts. Be born from above. You can be changed. The world can be changed. The country can be changed. A person can be changed. You can be changed. Amen! Is this it? <gasps> Guys, keep receiving at the front. Fresh wind, it's the final evening. How are you feeling? You doing okay? I do not want to distract from what's going on here. Keep ministering, keep going. Guys, I'm Frankie, I'm from the School of Ministry. What you have just seen up there is a small snippet of what I would love to share with you. Um, guys, I have about three minutes to tell you two things. Okay, can everyone shout three? three. Two. Yeah. Say hurry up, Frankie. <laughs> okay, I'm from the School of Ministry. You're gonna feel my excitement. The first thing I need to tell you is this. We have an opportunity for you. Are you ready for an opportunity? Yeah, can I see some open hands? Are we ready? Because I'm gonna throw it out there. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story and give you an opportunity. Also, is it the Holy Spirit or is my mouth so dry? Blah. Okay, the second thing I need to tell you is that we're gonna give away some prizes today, okay? So, stay engaged towards the end. Text your mates who are in the toilets, get them back, because they might be the winners. Okay, let me tell you a story. When I was 18, I was back in London, England, London, England, I was training to be a dancer. I was on the path to the West End or Broadway, as you guys might know it. And, oh, thank you. Is it obvious? <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll put it here. Um, I was on the path for the West End and my career was doing one of those. Has anyone ever been in a season of life where you're like, guys, I'm killing it. Look at me go. I was in that moment. I didn't know Jesus at all, didn't need to. Clearly, my career was doing one of these, not one of these, so why would I need to get to know him? Why would I need to find community? So I'm a little 18-year-old doing my thing, dancing, my career's doing one of these. Didn't know Jesus. I was on a night out on a Friday night, and um, tragically, not even in the dance studio, do you guys know it rains quite a lot in the UK? Have you heard that? Like, it's, it rains a lot in the UK. And I'm on a night out and I'm walking home in my heels and I did one of these. <laughs> like a full on slip on a drain on my back, not even in a cool style. And I ripped all the tendons and ligaments in my foot, like kind of off the bone all of them, passed out on the ground, got carried to hospital, and there I found out that I had so severely injured my foot that my career was basically done. I was gonna have to be out completely for eight weeks, no walking, no nothing for eight weeks. Are there any dancers, gymnasts, sports people in this room? Yeah, give me a wave. You guys know that when you get that, yeah, basketball players, football players, and soccer players, 
all of the above. If you get an injury, it's not the best place to be. And that was where my paycheck was coming from. That was literally my identity was wrapped up in being a dancer. And suddenly before my eyes, not even in the dance studio, it was done. So in that moment, uh, my mentality, my mental health took a massive hit and everything that was going right for me suddenly crashed down before my eyes and anxiety and depression absolutely overcame me. Um, now, this was on the Friday night, you guys with me? Saturday, Sunday, on Sunday, a friend, I had one friend who I was dancing with who just happened to be a Christian never really talked to me about it. I never asked, of course. And um, she said to me, she was like, hey, Frank, uh, I don't know if you're interested, but tomorrow night there is an alpha course happening at my church. Do you want to come? Now I'm on crutches. I'm like sad and miserable, just trying to figure out my life. Um, but guys, I was lured in. Can I tell you how? Free food. Free food. Who's been lured into places with free food? Honestly. Sometimes it's what you've got to do. Now, I was a student. I had no money. I, I couldn't get to the shops. I had no leg at that point to even walk upon. So I went to this alpha course. Now, do you want to hear the hilarity? Guess what they were teaching on, on that alpha course? Healing. Guess which red-haired, blue-eyed girl got healed that night, three days after ripping all the tendons and ligaments within her foot? This girl. Three days. That was my first impossible. Impossible. And I'm not kidding you, when I was literally that person like, don't touch me, don't come near me, don't pray for me, don't walk near me. And I walked home with a soggy foot because it was raining and I wanted to do one of these. I got healed, that was my first impossible. Okay, everyone still with me? Yeah. We're skipping to three years later, three years later. Now, my career's back on one of these. I'm, I was healed, my foot was back. I got back into the swing of things physically, here I go, mentally. The mental hit I took from that injury, I started doing one of these. Like my career was doing this, but my mentality was doing this. And the anxiety and the panic and the fear that was suddenly living with me every single day was bad. And I got to the point, and no exaggeration here, I was having three panic attacks a day. One in the morning when I'd wake up, one for lunch, and then one before I went to bed. And these panic attacks were the sort that send you to the hospital. I think if my parents knew what, like how sick I was, you know, they would, it would be like a hospital situation. I was so not well. So, as you can imagine, I wasn't in a great place, but my career was kind of going. I had completely forgotten about my healing. Now, we just talked about it just here, but you guys, have you had an amazing weekend? Yeah? Have you felt the Holy Spirit? Yes. Guys, don't forget what happens this weekend because little me who literally miraculously saw my foot healed, who had none of the information, none of the stories to go with it, three years later, I'd completely forgotten what he had done. Now, God sent another messenger in the form of another beautiful friend, and she came to me, and I was so unwell, and she was like, before you spend thousands of dollars on therapy or whatever else you're about to jump into, can we just have a conversation? Can we just talk about God? And at that point, I was open to hear anything. So I was like, sure, absolutely, whatever, talk to me. And she reminded me of the healing and she reminded me of that feeling that I felt of the impossible and the Holy Spirit that was working through me. And I truly felt myself come alive. That night, I filled out the form for the School of Ministry here in Toronto. And I, I'm not kidding you when I say, like, I didn't even know what Holy Spirit was. I'd never heard that term. I didn't know you could hear the voice of God. I didn't know anything about the prophetic or the Father heart. None of it. And I filled out the application form. Six months later, I jumped on an airplane and I arrived here. Now, guys, let me tell you. When I picture Christians back in the day, I literally thought, Christians, all you guys did 
myself now included, was like go to Africa and like build mud huts and dig wells. And that was literally all I thought. Like they're good people, that's all they do. So when I was on that plane to Toronto, riddled with anxiety, riddled with panic attacks, not knowing where I was going, I literally thought I was gonna jump off the plane and start building a mud hut and like digging a well. And so can you imagine the shock on my face when I arrived here at this concrete campus? And I was like, is this, am I in the right place? Like, did I make it here? So I arrived at the School of Ministry. You ready for impossible number two? I walked through the School of Ministry buildings. Now, do you know in the foundations of the foyer are Bible scriptures? And I walked through that foyer. I took, what, 10 steps in? And my friends, as a testament, I was completely healed of all my anxiety, all my depression, and every single panic attack I've ever, ever had. Two impossibles, and the journey hadn't even begun. So guys, that is my small spiel to basically say, do you know that there's a school of ministry across the parking lot that is on your doorstep? And that is my why. I'm giving you my why. There's no point in me just saying, I think you should come. I do think you should come. But I have seen incredible things. I've experienced them personally, and I have seen it thousands and thousands of times of people coming through and having miraculous healings and miraculous testimonies. And I just, I just want to give you the opportunity. So your hands out. Are you ready for the opportunity? You all have the opportunity to come to the School of Ministry. If you want more of this, and yes, amazing worship, amazing speakers, an amazing building. That's not really the point though, is it? More of the Holy Spirit. After this, the dust is gonna settle and I wanna make sure you're plugged in. I wanna, know, I wanna make sure you know that there's a next step. So hands up if you're coming up to the end of high school. <gasps> hands up if you're, you're a year out from the end of high school. Amazing. Hands up if you're a leader in this room, whether within your friend groups or as a pastor. This is all for you guys. Hands up if you're hungry for God. Okay, I see you. This is for you. We at the School of Ministry are so ready to receive. So when the dust is settled after conference, I want you to jump online. Our website is somtoronto.com. Type in School of Ministry Toronto. You'll find us right there. Come and find any of us. I would love to speak to every single one of you and tell you more and invite you in. DM us on Instagram. Do all the things. You know where to find us. Are you excited? Yeah? Amazing. Okay, we cannot wait to see you in September. Should we give out some prizes? All right, Pablo. All right, everybody. How you doing? How you doing? In fire for the Lord? Yes? I hope so. Because you are the generation, all right? Okay, we're going to talk about good stuff right now as well. We're going to do a giveaway and then we're going to tell the winner. Actually, we're going to find out who is the winner for, for the Nintendo Switch, all right? Who here is joining or participating in the raffle? Put your hand up. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, many, many potential winners. That's good. All right, everybody. So we got three things going on. I just told you the first two, and the third one will be a mystery. I'll tell you at the end. Okay, so the winner for the giveaway of three Canadian dollars of discount for the School of Ministry. <laughs> yeah, I was like 300,000. That is not right. So three Canadian dollars, all right? 300. 300. Oh, yes. Sorry. Language barriers, guys. I came from Brazil. Have grace on me. $300, okay? Not American. Not Brazilian. Hey, ow. Canadian dollars, yes. Thank you very much. All right, you ready? You might be here. Might be you. Let's see. Okay, with me. Three, two, one. And the winner is Jocelyn Stewart. All right, where are you? Jocelyn, yes, come up here. Well, or go there. Okay, so how are you feeling right now? Really uh, surprised. <laughs> Not expecting? Yeah. Oh, be blessed in Jesus' name, and we are excited to receive you. Welcome you in the school of ministry when your time come. Thank you. All right, so thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> 
That was amazing. She was right there. That was perfect, right? Okay, now the Nintendo Switch. You excited? All right, Beatrice. Let's see who is... Okay, you're going to pick a name? Pick a name for us. All right, there we go. It's me. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm not allowed. So, Santiago Zeron, 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 come here, brother. Come get your prize. Yes, Santiago, you've been blessed tonight. Woo! Come up here, brother. Yeah! Now that's joy right there. Here is your Nintendo Switch. Hey, bro, can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? <laughs> Tell me, how are you feeling right now? I'm happy. Did you think you would win? Um, yeah. Yes! Love that. Okay, have fun, brother. Have fun. All right. That was so fun. Love that guy. Just met him. Um, all right. Now, you all, get ready. Because these people down here, they are ready for something amazing. But I got to tell you, you got to protect your head. Okay? Watch your head because they're going to throw some chocolate at you. All right? You like chocolate? All right. They just did it. It's out there, I guess. Oh, yeah. What is going on? Throw farther. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was fast. Guess we all love chocolate, don't we? Come on. Yeah, do not fight, guys. Do not fight. Share. All right. Cool, everybody. Thank you so much. We're the School of Ministry. We are very excited for your growth and your journey with our Lord Jesus. And if you feel it's your time to come, visit us. Join the School of Ministry because it is life-changing. It changed my life. It will change yours too. Yes? All right? Cool. Thank you, Kaden. Thank you so much, Pablo. You know what? That was like when you send, like, if you're, I'm not a parent yet, but like if you were a parent and you sent your kids to like the grandparents' house and then they like gave them tons of candy and sugar before they had to go to bed, I feel like that's what just happened. <laughs> that was so good. I love that. All right. So I just want to take a moment to welcome up our speaker tonight. So can we just welcome Josh to the stage? We've already heard him before. And we believe that God has something special that he wants to speak through Josh tonight. So Josh, I just bless you to have fun and to lead us into the presence wow. of God. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a night. Man, I have so much to say with such little time. Okay. How many of you, raise your hand, have had an encounter with the Holy Spirit in this last couple of days. And you know what's crazy about that is it's probably different for each and every one of you. Isn't that wild that Holy Spirit reaches in and does something different exactly what each and every one of you needs? All right, another one, another one. All right, shh. This is our final night, guys. Let's right now, just close your eyes, put your hand on your belly, and we're going to call our spirit to attention one last time for this conference. So put your hand on your belly and say, Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. Say it louder. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. Help, me Help me to focus tonight. Focus tonight. I want to receive, receive all that you have for me. Have for me. Amen. Amen. Okay. How many of you... This is gonna take a little vulnerability. Have you noticed a pattern with me? I like to force you into public vulnerability. How many of you after yesterday morning session went to somebody and got honest about struggles for the first time and you feel freer than ever? Raise your hand. No, no, raise your hand for real. This is incredible. This is incredible. 
because we've, I, I'm so grateful for Murray and Ash's sessions today because we're, we're beginning to try to help you guys make this thing real. You're having major encounters with God every session, but we gotta have these little ways of now what? And so you going to somebody and getting honest about your struggles and your issues, this is one of those now what's. So amen, I'm so proud of you guys. Okay, I have so many things that I wanna see happen tonight. I wanna see Holy Spirit come again in a fresh way and visit us before we leave. Who wants that? Who wants a fresh baptism of fire tonight? You know, in the book of Acts, the disciples, they got filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts 2. But then there's about four or five more times throughout the book where the Holy Spirit would continue to fall on them in fresh ways. And so I'm believing for another moment of that baptism to hit us tonight that's gonna seal the work of what he's done. But another thing that I'm really believing for that's more important than all of that is I know that there's people in this room tonight that I do not think that maybe you have surrendered your life to Jesus. You're here, you're around it, you kinda like it, you're, you're, you may even be up here worshiping, but if you're really honest with yourself, there's darkness that you're living. So you, you, you go hang out with your Christian friends and you act Christian, but then when you're over here, you act another way. And it probably would be a sign that you haven't actually fully surrendered and said, from this point forward, I'm giving you my all. Some of y'all have played the church game and you come to the conferences and you know, Holy Spirit's good and he's kind, and he'll still visit you. But if you're honest, you're like, I don't know that I'm really surrendered. I'm believing that that's gonna happen for you tonight. That we're gonna make sure tonight that you have a moment to repent of your sin and that you are gonna step into this relationship with God by grace through faith and you're gonna walk out of this room tonight with confidence that if tonight was your last night to live on this earth, you would have confidence that you would stand before God and he would say, welcome home. That's the most important thing that can happen out of this night is if you are not sure you are not confident, you don't know if you've really fully surrendered in that way that tonight would be your night. I need you guys to shh. Come on, let's not, let's not squander the last moments of this weekend. We got one more to go. I'm so stoked for my buddy that got the Nintendo Switch. We're excited, we got our chocolate. This is good, this is awesome but we got about 45 more minutes together before we go back home and I'm believing for something real sovereign to break in tonight, deal? So I'm gonna flow a little bit tonight and we're gonna see how the night plays out, but I wanna do my best to call you to something high and great. I wanna believe for a moment with the Holy Spirit. I wanna see people get saved. I wanna see all of it tonight as we end this final night, deal? All right, I wanna walk you through a couple of verses, a couple of tools to take home. My goal for this session is to almost do a little bit of a wrap up, okay? And then at the very end, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a moment for you to respond to the gospel, and then we're gonna ask for a corporate baptism of fire to come and rest upon us in a significant way. Deal? All right, screens guy, if we could pull up Psalms chapter one. Psalm one, verses one through three. Are y'all ready for this? This is important for you in your teenage years and in the days ahead, are you ready? No, for real, if you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Psalms chapter one, verse one, it says, blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Now some versions would say counsel of the ungodly. AKA, you need to be careful who you're listening to. You need to be careful what voices are speaking into your life and telling you what life is all about. 
That's not just your friendship groups. That's your favorite Instagram influencer. That's your favorite TikToker. That's Taylor Swift. That's you name it. The Bible warns you. Be careful and you, well, it doesn't say be careful, but it says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. So guys, be careful what you listen to and the advice that you get. Listen, you, if you don't think this is a big deal now, I've got grown buddies of mine Guys that walked with me when I first got saved 16 years ago that now are in their 40s and 50s and they're crushing it in business and they watch all their Instagram influencers on, you gotta get up and grind and you gotta do this and you gotta do that. And before you know it, my buddies, my friends, the guys that walked with me, that led me to Jesus, they have let counsel that is worldly wisdom influence them on how they should live. And before they know it, they got all of these humanistic ideas of what it means to be successful. So it says, blessed are you if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now watch this. Now it says, nor stands in the way of sinners, and we'll go to the next one, and sits in the seat of the scoffer. So now it's dealing with your friends. Be careful who you're standing with. Because who you hang around and who you kind of associate with and who you stand with, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself sitting with them in full agreement with the lifestyle they live. So blessed is the man who does what? Doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. This is different than you trying to win your friends to Jesus. This is about you finding your primary friendships and fellowships with those that are living lifestyles of sin. Because it says, because the next trajectory is, nor sit in the seat of the scoffer. So listen, guys, I wanna tell you something. Your inner circle of friends should not be unbelievers. Your bros, your homies, the ones that you kick it with the most should not be unbelievers. Now you should be befriending all kinds of unbelievers to introduce them to Jesus. But you gotta be careful who you're hanging around and who you're standing with because before you know it, you might end up sitting in full agreement with them. Now, but watch this. But who wants to be blessed? Okay, that's what, this, that's what this psalm is about. You're blessed if you don't do these things. Now watch this. We got some cool promises ahead. Watch this. Bring the verse back up on the screen. But you, your delight is in the law of the Lord. Ooh, we don't like that. <laughs> AKA the words of the scripture. And on his law, he meditates day and night. God wants you to actually find delight in the ways of God that are found in your Bible. So young people, leave this place and get in your Bible. Read one chapter a day and ask the Holy Spirit to help you because he sa- it says, blessed is the man whose delight is in the ways of God and on his law, you're gonna start meditating because once you get the word inside of you, you'll start remembering it. And then that's when you'll start meditating on it. And you'll start walking around as a teenager in your high schools or homeschool, whatever you do, and if you get faithful to these little things, all of a sudden, counsel from God is running through your mind. You're remembering that Bible verse you read the other day. Now watch this, it keeps going. If you do these things, okay, so what have we hit so far? Be careful what you listen to, right? Don't, don't, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't hang out with fools. I need your guys' attention right now. Everyone focus. So we're, we're being careful the, the counsel that we're listening to. We're being careful the friends we're hanging out with. We're gonna try to figure out how to, in a small way, start reading our word. And then here's what it says about you. You do these things, you're gonna be like a tree that's planted by streams of water 
and you're going to be a fruit bearer. And then it says something crazy. And your leaves won't wither. Isn't that crazy? So there's a supernatural life for you of fruit bearing and your leaves being beautiful. Not, you ever, you ever uh, in the fall when the leaves fall from the trees and they get real, uh, they're dead? Well, according to this, you're going to be like a tree and your leaves will never wither and will never die. Okay, well, guess what? I got another psalm for you to back this up. You guys okay with the Bible? Okay, Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? How many of y'all know you need to go on a journey in the area of purity, men and women? Let's be real. We're on this journey together. Well, how can a young man keep his way pure? It says by guarding it according to the word. You can't just grit your teeth when you leave here. You guard your life by getting the Bible inside of you. I hope y'all listen to Murray's word this morning. He went deep with you guys on putting on the armor of God and one of those things is what? The sword of the spirit. Which is what? The word of God. So not only does it cut, divide, and do all that, it helps guard you to keep your way pure. Okay, now how many of y'all, we already did this once, but how many of you, has anyone like taking any kind of mental note of what I'm talking about? Watch out who you're hanging out with. Be careful the wisdom you're listening to. Start reading your Bible. <laughs> okay, now, now back to the Holy Ghost stuff again, you ready? Who here had an encounter with the Holy Spirit today? Well, I wanna tell you that the Holy Spirit is far more than tongues and shaking and crying. I love all that. But before Holy Spirit is tongues and wind, rain, and wine, and whatever else he is, <laughs> before he's all of that, he's inside of you to help you. Watch this. Screens guy, you might have a trouble running with me on this one. I'm just going to run through it. How many of y'all know that Jesus had some really important conversations with his disciples before he was going to the cross? Just a little hint for you guys. If you want to get lost in the Bible in a wild way and you want to find out how Jesus hangs out and talks with the Father, read John chapter 13 through 17. Okay. Okay. It's in that little conversation that Jesus has with his people. Okay, first of all, get yourself into the story for a second. You guys ready? Pretend you're the disciples. You're one of the 12, okay? Jesus is sitting with you, and he's telling you, I'm about to die. <laughs> and you're like, okay. And he goes, but hey, I gotta tell you something. It's better that we go through with this. Now, how many of y'all would be confused by Jesus' leadership in that moment? Anybody? You've been rolling with this dude for three and a half years. You're on the run. Every town that you've been to wants you guys dead. You're, you're basically hiding. You're scared. You're freaked out. And the guy that's led you into this mess <laughs> is now going, hey, I'm leaving. And you're like, what? I'm, you're leaving? Yeah, it's going to be bad. I'm going to die. And y'all are all going to deny me. <laughs> like it's like total buzzkill. Right? How many of y'all would be questioning Jesus in this moment? He goes, hey, I got something to tell you. It's going to be better for you that I go. I mean, I don't, if I was them, I'd be like, how on earth is this going to be better, Jesus? You have gotten us into a mess. We've had to pull you out of crowds. Like, you keep putting your foot in your mouth and saying the most offensive stuff to the leaders of these cities. Like, how is it gonna be better that you leave us with this mess? Can you imagine what they're thinking? He goes, here's why. He goes, my father and I, we came up with a plan for you. And it's the most perfect, well thought out plan and we've set you up for success. How many of you know that Jesus always makes the right decisions? 
and his wisdom is always the best wisdom, okay? So he's going, hey, the Father and I, we've thought this moment out for you, and we have come up with a plan so good and so perfect that it'll actually be better for you when I leave you guys. And they're like, what is it? He goes, I'm going to put me, my spirit, us, God, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, I'm actually going to put it inside of you. I'm actually going to give you an entire new nature. Because right now, you are totally holding on by faith, and you intellectually are trying to hang with me. He goes, but I'm going to give you this gift. And he starts out by calling Holy Spirit your helper. So guys, when Holy Spirit has come upon you in power these last few nights, it's not just you can leave and remember a moment. Now you get to hang out with this guy. You get to make him your best friend. And he's here to help you. Okay, what is he here to help you with? John 14, 26. Yeah, thank you. You ready for this? He will teach you. How many of y'all go, man, this following God thing's hard. I don't know what's right or what's wrong. I need help. I can't figure this out. I mean, I'm just getting started. I mean, how am I going to read the whole Bible so I can know how to live? How many of y'all feel like, I, like, do I have to hurry up and finish the Bible to know how to be a Christian? I never thought about that before. Well, he goes, hey, you're going to have Holy Spirit inside of you, and he's going to teach you. Don't worry. It's like, oh. That's kind of like cheating. Yeah, it's kind of like cheating. It's like, it's, it's kind of like cheating. How many of y'all, be real, how many of y'all ever peeked at the cheat sheet at the test? Somehow you got a hold of the answers. That's what it's like having Holy Spirit inside of you. He will divinely teach you stuff. Okay, watch this. Let's keep going. How many of y'all struggle to remember anything you ever read? Welcome to my life, guys. I, I'm bad. I promise you I'm worse. When I read my Bible, I get distracted the whole time and I lock in and half the time I don't remember anything that I read. Anyone ever been there? Well, guess what? I got good news for you. Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance all of the things that he said to us. So sometimes you're reading your word and it feels like it's not doing nothing but it's almost like it's being stored like in an account on the inside of you and Holy Spirit any moment can just pull from it, pull from it and just bring forth things to remembrance. So if you're nervous of where do I go from here, guess what, Holy Spirit will teach you. When I first gave my life to Jesus, you wanna know how I knew I was saved? Well, I knew I was saved because I did what they say I'm supposed to do. I went and said the sinner's prayer and repented of my sins, so I guess I'm saved, right? But it was the next day at 18 years old that I cussed and it felt wrong. And then I made an inappropriate comment about a girl and it felt wrong. And all day after I got saved, all of these things that never felt wrong, all of a sudden felt wrong. Holy Spirit was teaching me from day one of my salvation, of my salvation of what was right and what was wrong before I even had time to dig into the word. Holy Spirit's here to help you, to teach you. He's here to help you remember things. Well, how do I, how do I know? How do I fully know if this is right or this is wrong? Well, I just told you. John 16, eight through 10, says that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will convict the world. So he's your divine convictor, helper, teacher, reminder of all things, convictor. I hope this stirs you up to say, wow, I get all of this? Yes. Greatest deal ever. John 16, 14 through 15. Watch this. This one's kind of funny to me. Pull it up on the screen for me, got it? Okay, so... A couple of verses before this, don't, don't go to this screen, guys, don't worry, don't, don't go there. A couple of verses before this, Jesus basically says to the disciples, there's so much more that I want to tell you guys, but I can't. 
because y'all can't handle it. That's basically what he says to him. He goes, you can't comprehend or handle any of this. He goes, but when I go and you get Holy Spirit, he goes, he, Holy Spirit, will glorify me and he will take what is mine and he'll declare it to you. So Holy Spirit becomes your divine middleman to receive impossible truths for your mind to comprehend. And he makes it palatable and he deposits it into your spirit. First of all, y'all been brainwashed a little bit to think it's normal to believe what we believe. It is ridiculous what we believe. We believe that God impregnated a teenage girl. We believe that. <laughs> like, like, that's weird. We literally believe that God led like over 100,000 people through a sea. Like, parted, or part, you know what I mean? Guys, we believe some goofy stuff. We literally believe that Jesus Christ was inside of a teenage girl and then comes out and lives a perfect life so that you can be free. Like, we believe that because one guy lives perfectly, you can fall on the ground and weep in the presence of God. That doesn't make any sense in the natural. But because you have Holy Spirit, he takes impossible truths, impossible truths for your mind to comprehend, and he bypasses your intellect and puts deposits of truth into your spirit. Be a little less harsh on your friends who want to prove science to you. Makes a lot of sense. Relax, pray for them to get saved. <laughs> They're actually not weird, you are. But <laughs> They're logical, you're weird. Because you've been born of something that's beyond logic. You're walking in something that is supernatural and it was free and you didn't earn it. Wow, Holy Spirit. That's something else, isn't it? Becky took the last two nights to continue to call you guys to a high, high vision. To live a life set apart in your generation. How many of y'all got convicted about her word on idol worship last night? Whew, I sure did. And I agree wholeheartedly with her. Those of you who have been encountering God this last three days, you go on a journey to do some of the things I just talked about. Being careful what you watch, being careful who you listen to, careful who your friends are, and now start having this intimacy with the Holy Spirit where you're asking him to help you, where you're asking him to teach you, where you're asking him to help you remember stuff. When you start going on this journey of a relationship with God from this day forward, I believe that you are going to look so radically different than your generation. And I am believing for a generation of Daniels in this room tonight. Yes, his name is Daniel. We all know the Daniel, you know, we all know the Daniel and the lion's den story. You know, we all know the throw him in the fiery furnace story. But before any of that happened in Daniel chapter one, he and his buddies in their younger years made a decision that they were not going to go the way of the world. And they set themselves apart and it dramatically changed everything for them. How many of y'all ever heard of John the Baptist? Anybody ever heard of John the Baptist? Before I get into him, how many of y'all wanna know, okay, if Jesus came right now and said, hey, I wanna tell you about a guy. He's the greatest man ever born of a woman. How many of y'all would like to meet that guy? How many of y'all would like to meet the guy that Jesus says is the greatest man ever born? You know he said that about John the Baptist? Did you guys know that? Jesus said that John the Baptist was the greatest man ever born of a woman. And here's what John gave his life to. You ready for this? He lived in the woods, <laughs> fasting, 
and praying and preparing his friends for the greatest hour of human history, Jesus arriving to the earth. How many of y'all, when you think of John the Baptist, you think of this wild, radical weirdo? Be honest. The Chosen kind of made him out to be a little creepy. How many of y'all seen The Chosen? And they call him, they call him Creepy John. <laughs> I want to propose a thought to you. I think if the rest of the world understood the time that they were living in, John's life wouldn't have looked so radical. When everybody else is sleeping, anything that you do awake looks radical. I don't think John's lifestyle of fasting in the woods and saying, hey, I know the hour. Behold the Lamb of God. He's coming and he's preparing his friends for it. John understood how serious the hour was. Dude, he knows. Like we are in the window of time that Jesus is about to come on the earth, the Messiah. I can't give myself to anything else. The hour is urgent. So John's life wasn't radical. It was the only lifestyle that made sense in light of all that he knew was coming. And I want to tell you something. The earth is getting darker. Anyone noticed? It's getting crazier, and I'm telling you, there's a real day coming, guys, where Jesus Christ is actually going to return on the earth again, and he's looking for friends. <laughs> friends. Because you want to know, you want to know what you want to know what who John the Baptist had a revelation of Jesus being? A friend. A friend. John the Baptist was a friend of the bridegroom. And I believe with my whole heart that John the Baptist was not the end of a wild time of Old Testament prophets. I believe that John was this critical man at a critical moment to give a new identity to how we ought to live. He was a man who understood Jesus as a bridegroom God who was coming. And he, he was right in the middle of a moment we were transitioning from the old into the new. And I believe that John's radical set apart lifestyle is actually the kind of lifestyle that God is looking in for each and every one of you to say yes to. I'm not saying you're going to go live in the woods. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that I know that there's a longing on the inside of your heart to be a part of something that is bigger than yourself. Is there anybody in the audience right now that says, I want to be a part of something bigger than myself? Because I want to say something to you. You have all of eternity in front of you. All of eternity in front of you. Billions and trillions of years in front of you. So if you only live drunk on yourself and your little 80, 90 year window, you're going to hit 90 and feel so unfulfilled. You know, Billy Graham spent the, yes, anyone know who Billy Graham is? One of the greatest soul winners of all time. Anyone heard of him? Do you know that the leaders that got to spend time with Billy Graham on the last waking, you know, months of his life, he had a consistent theme of telling these people, if I could do my life over again, I would have done less crusades, less ministry, I would have spent more time with my family and my kids. This dude has led millions upon millions upon millions of people to Jesus. And when he hit his last moments of his life, he came to the realization that this wasn't it. I made this great impact on the earth, and we love that, love that, love that. But man, when you get older and you hit those last moments of your life, you start to realize, man, what was life really about? And you, it ends up boiling down to the simplest things. 
There is no calling, no career, no profession, no anything that your dreams are. And I want you to dream big. I want some of y'all to go to the NBA. I want some of y'all to play in the NFL. I want some of y'all to be multimillionaire business owners. I want some of y'all to do this and do that and do all of these things. But I'll tell you right now that this is just a small glimpse of all of eternity. And there's a bigger storyline than you just figuring out God's purpose for your life. I'm telling you, when God finds his friends that get lost in his bigger story, he fulfills all your desires. Who's heard of David before? You all know my favorite chapter in the Bible about David? You all know David because he killed Goliath. We all know that. That's not, that. That literally is like the smallest part of David's life to me. You want to know the chapter about David's life that, that rocks me to the core? You guys ready for this? Y'all with me? 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. David is now king. He's got it now, his promise. What he was anointed for as a teenage boy to become this king. And if y'all have studied the story of David at all, you know that dude lived a rough life. How many of y'all had your girlfriend's dad, every time he came over to the house, throw a spear at your head? Anyone ever got, anyone, anyone else got a crazy girlfriend dad like that? Bros, help me out here. Any of y'all, any of y'all's girlfriend's dad, every time you come over to the house for dinner, literally pulls a gun out and shoots at you? That's what David's going through. This, this dude's father-in-law was a psycho. And David didn't even ask for any of this. He was just a kid in a, out in a field loving God. But in 2 Samuel 7, David has made it through the trial of a lifetime. He's finally found rest from war. He's now king, and he's made it, guys. I mean, he is the first-round draft pick. He has made it. He's in his seat. It's, he's got the house. He's got the money. He's got the cars. He's got it all, man. He is in his seat. And it says, and David was given rest. It's David's first time in years to just to chill out and rest. And guess what comes out of David's mouth in 2 Samuel 7? He is completely unsatisfied with the fact that he now has his promise to become king. You want to know what he says? It's, he says, it's not right that I get all of this. The way he words it is that I get a house of cedar. That, that was a big deal back then. <laughs> It's not right that I get all of this, but God doesn't have a house. Because what was happening in that time is God's house, where the presence dwells, I'm just being super generic with you guys, was intense. Nobody had labored to build God a home. So David's got his promise, and he got there out of obedience. God's rewarding him. Like, good job, my son. You were faithful. You, you walked this out in your teenage years when nobody's looking. Here you go. You are king. Here's the money. Here's the resources. Take a season to rest. You've won the war. Yes. And David goes, Lord, I appreciate all of this, but this is out of balance. It's not right that I get all of these riches and this blessing, but no, no one's built you a house. This is all in 2 Samuel chapter 7. And God, and God didn't tell him to do that. God didn't tell him to build him a house. But David was preoccupied with something bigger because if you remember, David got marked as a teenager by a phrase that God said over him that said, there's a teenage boy out in the field. He's a man after my own heart. So that promise and that, per God, that, that perspective that God had over David as a teenager carried into his adult years. And now he is seeing an out of balance order that I get all of these blessings from God, but nobody's built. God is literally homeless. And it unlocks something in God's heart. Because God didn't ask him to do that. God goes and visits this dude named Nathan, and he goes, hey, Nathan. This is, this is guys, this is 2024 version. 
is the Gen Z, is the Gen Z edition. <laughs> G, what is it? G, G-E-S-V. Gen Z uh, English Standard Version. He goes over to Nathan and he goes, Nathan, did you hear what David just said? He goes, I've never asked anybody to build me a house. Imagine being so preoccupied with the bigger story of God that you're doing things for him out of love, not out of just obedience. To the point that it starts, that you start moving God's heart because you start unlocking desires in his heart he didn't even ask you to do. And you wanna know what he says to David after that? It gets real crazy. You thought being king and having all the money and being the leader of a nation was a big deal? You wanna know what, now wanna know what he does for David because David wanted to build him a house? You wanna know what he does? He makes a promise to David that he would have Jesus Christ, the Messiah, come through his family line. Can you imagine? God found so much friendship in David that he goes, because David is so preoccupied with building something for me, I have found the kind of guy that through his family line, I'm going to send the Messiah, and you would not be here in this auditorium right now. You would not be here in this auditorium right now if David in his teenage years would have not have made a commitment to be a man after God's heart. Isn't that wild to think? That your life is that important? I, th- I don't know if I hit this with you guys or not. On, on the other night, I hit it with the school on Thursday morning. But 2 Peter chapter 3 says you have a lifestyle that you can live that actually hastens the return of the Lord. Do you know what the word hasten means? Of course you don't. Hasten means to cause something to happen sooner than its original intent. God's not coming back for people that don't want him to. He's looking for friends. How many of y'all love getting a prophetic word? How many of y'all love prophecy? I got a word for you. The best, biggest, most powerful, last prophetic word that'll ever happen. You ready for it? Revelation 22, chapter 17. The spirit and the bride say come. What that means is there's a day coming in human history where every believer in the world will be in sync with God's heart and the Holy Spirit together Asking for Jesus to come back. That's the kind of story that you're a part of. And I know it's like, whoa, this is wild. It is wild. It is wild. Real wild. But it starts, but it starts with you when nobody's looking, making decisions to love and honor God. Simple as that. Am I a little intense? It's even more intense inside of me than how it's being communicated. Because when I was 18 years old, I stood in an auditorium in Kansas City, Missouri with 20,000 people. I was 45 days saved. I thought men that raised their hands in worship had a problem. That's where I was at in my heart. I was not super on fire. I was just blown away by all the cute girls that were Christians. I didn't know there was a such thing. I was in a different zone in my, heart, in, my, in my head. I'm a 45 day old Christian and a guy who looks like a total dork that you would not have at the youth conference. He didn't have a Supreme hoodie on. He didn't, look at this guys, I did this for you by the way. I figured this, I figured this much. Ain't no one a Royals fan in Kansas City. I'm about to move to Atlanta, and I, I, so I can't quite say I'm a Braves fan, so I'm safe. I'm not, what I'm not saying is I'm a Blue Jays fan, but I did this for you guys, okay? I did this for you guys. We'll see. I like Toronto a lot. But here I am at this youth conference, and the dude they got on stage ain't cool. He ain't a vibe. He ain't a vibe at all. He's got dress slacks on that are, that are so wide, they go straight over almost the whole top of his shoe. That's kind of a vibe now, I guess, but it wasn't a vibe then. Tucked in dress shirt, a little bit of a gut, not cool guy, dorky glasses. 
And here I am, 18 years old, 45 days saved. I don't raise my hands in worship. I don't do altar calls yet. And that man got on the stage that night and he preached John the Baptist and that God is setting apart a generation who are gonna live their lives in light of the return of Jesus. They're gonna find their identity in him coming back and they're gonna prepare their friends. And then he has the audacity to say, and God's gonna raise up people that do this for their occupation. I'm like, how do you do that as a job? And he's like, it will be your job. You will fast and pray and God will figure it out for you financially. <laughs> and he literally, I'm not exaggerating, and he gives an altar call for those that are gonna become full-time occupational John the Baptist. I'm literally not kidding. <laughs> You're gonna give your whole life to fasting and prayer. And he kept saying this thing about eating the scroll. You'll eat the scroll, which is this phrase out of Revelation where John was you know, digesting the word of God. And, and, and all these people like, you know, in a conference moment, you're hyped, you're fired up. All these people go running to the altar, you know? And I, I didn't. But as an 18 year old, 45 days saved, I did not understand what the heck he was talking about. But I watched a man who had been burning in the secret and his fire and his deep went past my 18 year old brain and touched something on the inside of me called Holy Spirit. And I had no idea what he was talking about, but I could feel something on the inside of me saying, this is what you're made for. I didn't even go up to the altar call. I didn't even say a prayer out loud. And underneath my breath, I said, God, whatever that means, I will give my life to it. And I stand here today making that decision when I was 18 years old. I stand here today, going to be 35 in June. And by the grace of God, I have occupationally given my life to what he said 15 years ago. No, for real, for real. And I got friends that said yes too. And now they're disillusioned thinking they wasted their 20s. They wasted their later young adult life. And I wanna say to you, there is no such thing as waste. Last story, Mary. Y'all heard of this story before? Mary and Martha. Jesus shows up to Mary and Martha's house. And I don't know about you, but if I was Martha, I'd be doing the same thing. Listen, I, I've been hosted pretty dramatically here at this conference. I've been joking with the team. I keep saying, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. <laughs> These guys picked me up with a sign, my name on a sign. They rented a car, because none of y'all had a cool enough car, I guess, to impress me. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just messing. They've honored my butt off. So, hey, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not mad at Martha. Martha's preparing a meal for Jesus, you kidding me? And her flaky sister <laughs> is not helping at all. And she is worshiping at his feet. Y'all heard of this story before? She takes a super expensive bottle of Le Labo. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. Anyone know what Le Labo fragrances are? Is anyone here? A couple of y'all know what that means. She takes the most expensive fragrance and pours it out on his feet. And of course, Judas got a little money issues. <laughs> he goes, oh my God, you know how much that's worth? And Jesus, in, in, in a holy kind of violence, says, leave her alone. Mary's chosen the good part. Her extravagant devotion was the wisest thing she could do. And you want to know what else is really crazy that he says? Everywhere that the gospel is preached from this day forward, Mary's story will be told as a memorial to her. And I want to make, an, make a statement against the church of my nation and say, when was the last time the gospel was preached in context to Mary? Jesus said, everywhere the gospel would be preached, the story of Mary will be told, a.k.a. it's radical, at his feet, devotion, and it's the wisest thing that you can choose in your day. <clears throat> and now as we transition, I want to say this. I'm not going to waste any time. Before we get to the altar call for everyone to get swirled up, because it's God's going to do that, I promise. We're going to have Holy Ghost pandemonium tonight. Some of y'all are going to literally levitate out of the building. <laughs> no, I don't know. Hopefully. 
Maybe this whole stage is just going to catch on fire. It's just going to be, we're just going to be all up in the glory or something. I don't know. But before we get there, I want to have an honest and hard conversation with some of y'all. It is the kindness of the Lord that leads us to repentance, but I want to say something else. It is his kindness that draws us in. But let me tell you this much. The most fearful, harshest, worst day of your life will be you choosing to live a double life, not surrender to Jesus, and die and stand before him and find out that you're gonna spend eternity somewhere else. And some of y'all are playing Christian. You've had a couple little moments with Jesus here and there, and it's, you know, and, but, but when, if you're honest, if you're really honest, you're not really surrendered. You haven't really said I'm all in. So you go to youth group, and every so often your heart gets touched at youth group, and you know, one day you kind of want God, but if you're honest, the overall theme of your life is when nobody's looking and when no one's, no one's watching and when you're not around your church friends, you're a different person. And it's that way because you have not truly, 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 truly had a moment where you came to the realization that he is better than the lifestyle that I'm living. And today I'm gonna make a choice. God's not expecting you to give everything up in one second, but what he is expecting you to do is to come before him and receive salvation and make a declaration that from this point forward, whatever you wanna deal with, God, I'm all in. If some of y'all be smoking weed and tomorrow you might not, that might not be the one thing he wants to deal with you on. But you're making a commitment to say, I'm not sure. Josh, I'm listening to you right now. And you know what? I'm not sure. Because I know the life that I'm living when nobody's looking and I have not had a moment yet where I have really come to the realization that I need to fully surrender because the way that I am living is not gonna end me up anywhere great. That's group number one. That's group number one. And you know who you are in group number one. Because you know. Now I got group number two. You ready for this one? Group number two is for some of y'all that have only ever known about Jesus. You grew up in a Christian home. You have got the best Christian loving parents on earth. You read your Bible. You do all the Christian things. But when you hear a testimony like mine of a guy that went to prison... Or your, or your messed up buddy who's jacking around doing stuff he shouldn't be doing, you have a self-righteous side of you that thinks that they needed salvation more than you. I didn't grow up in the hood. I didn't have broken parents. I never done the stuff that my friend did. And you've actually lived the last 16, 17 years of your life imagining that you're not just as wicked as the guy down the road who's cracked out on drugs. Jesus lays the bar, sets the tone and sets the standard when he, when he preached the Sermon on the Mount. Anyone ever, ever heard of this sermon before in Matthew 5, 6, and 7? Jesus comes out swinging and he's standing in front of a bunch of religious leaders and he goes, hey, you out there. He goes, you think you're righteous and holy because you got enough self-control to not murder somebody. You judge the guy over there who acted out in it. He goes, I say, if you even have angry in your heart towards a brother, you are a murderer. He goes, hey, bro out there who prides yourself at never looking at pornography like your friend does, I say this to you. If you've even one time looked at a girl with an inappropriate thought, he goes, you are a lustful adulterer like anybody else. He sets the tone. In the book of Romans, Paul says, none is righteous, no, not one. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about right now. You're going, oh yeah, that's me. I've subconsciously believed that because I haven't done the stuff that the other kids have done, because I grew up in a Christian home, because I do all the Christian things, you're going, wait a second. I don't know that I've ever come to my own reality of recognizing that I'm in need of a savior. In 2021, 
I got burdened for my kids to have an encounter with God. And my buddy Daniel and I did a 10 day water fast asking God to sovereignly visit my children who know nothing but Jesus, who know nothing but 24 seven prayer, who know nothing but it. And on day 10 of my fast, my son in my living room gets gripped by the fear of the Lord and starts weeping and starts confessing sins. Sins like sometimes I'm disobedient to my teacher. Sometimes, Dad, I go to churches and conferences with you, and, you know, the Lord, he said something along the lines of, like, I just, you know, the Lord's doing stuff, or he said something along the lines of, and I, and I just don't care, and I'm hanging out with my friends, and he is literally quivering and trembling, and he's literally saying, I don't want to go to hell when I die. My 10-year-old son, because we were dealing with stuff in the neighborhood, because we got unbelievers in our neighborhood, and my kids think that they're bad, and, 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 and they're, you know, sometimes my kids think that those are the bad kids, we're the good kids. And it's like, you think that you're better than him down the road? So two groups. Group number one, you are living in active, unrepentant sin. And you know that you are legitimately not living a life with the revelation and the fear of the Lord that God is watching my decisions. You have not come to a place of surrender to where you're willing to give these things up and run wholeheartedly into the grace of God. That's group number one. And group number two, you've grown up around Christianity your whole life and you've never come to the realization that you are just is in need of a savior as anybody else. If, that, if you are in one of those two groups, do not waste a single second. Come, come forward tonight and get right with God. Some of y'all are embarrassed what your friends might think. Jesus literally said, if you deny me before people, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. This is the best decision you've ever made. You are gonna walk out of this room tonight with confidence and assurance that you are right with God. Keep coming, keep coming. I preached this very message at a secular public high school one month ago in Kansas City and over 300 kids at a secular high school got saved. In this same situation. Guys, this is the best decision you have ever made. You're gonna leave this moment tonight receiving the free gift of grace of God and you are gonna invite the Holy Spirit to come and make his home in you in a fresh way. And from this point forward, you have a clean conscience from this point forward. You can stand with confidence before God from this day forward. Some of y'all heard my message on Friday and you're like, I already thought I am standing before God with confidence. Not if you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus yet. So worship team, help me out here a little bit. Right now, I just want you to close your eyes. This is between you and God right now. If you actually believe this, then I want you to repeat after me. You guys know in heaven right now, it says that all of heaven rejoices when one sinner comes to repentance. The biggest party ever is about to go down in heaven right now. There's probably 400 of you up here right now. It's about to get wild in heaven right now. So with your eyes closed, with your heart for real before God right now, I want you to repeat after me. If you believe this, say Jesus. I confess, I confess that you are Lord, that, you are Lord, that there is no other way to salvation, no way to salvation but, through you. but through you. I confess, I confess that, you that you died on my behalf. On my behalf. You, took my you took my sin on the cross and you rose from the dead. From the dead. Jesus, Jesus, tonight, I give you my life. I choose to turn from sin. I no longer am a slave to sin. And I commit today to live holy. If you say it's bad, I say it's bad. 
If you say it's good, I say it's good. Jesus, I thank you for this gift. Amen. Amen. Okay. Worship team, I need your help here for a second because you know it's about to happen. The Bible says all of heaven, guys, all of it. Jesus, the Father, the thousands of angels up there, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, all the saints of old, every believer that's died and is now with the Lord, all of heaven is looking down at Toronto, Canada on this night, on March 30th at 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time. All of heaven is looking down on you with full celebration and rejoicing. And what we're gonna do is on the count of three, when I say three, as a prophetic act, you are gonna let the greatest cry, shout, excitement, joy, thank you, dance, whatever you need to do to express the fact that all of heaven is doing that right now. Are you ready? And then we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you with fresh fire, deal? Ready, one. Are you guys for real? How many of y'all believe you just got saved? How many of y'all believe that your life just got redeemed from the pit? How many of y'all know that you deserve hell but no more? So one, two, three, Jesus! We thank you! Jesus, we thank you! We are free from sin! We are free from sin! We are alive to God! Jesus, I thank you! Jesus, we say thank you! 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 That you've really felt forgiven. That you've really felt forgiven. Whatever you guys are feeling, worship team, take us up. Let's have a time of worship and then we're going to pray for the baptism of fire. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is in within me, bless his name. Praise the Lord. Soul and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me, bless His holy name. Hey, praise the Lord, oh my soul, and praise Him. All that's within me, bless praise His holy Him like your life just got redeemed from praise the pit. The Lord, oh my soul, and let all Within me, bless his soul. And for the rest of you that just want to come forward and receive, just come. For the rest of you that want to come forward and receive, just come. Come join the party. Come join the party. Praise the Lord on my soul and let all that's within me, bless his holy name. Praise the Lord on my soul and let all that's within me, bless his holy name. Praise the Lord on my soul and let all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Holy day, praise the Lord. 
paso en medio de su tiempo Es su sol Praise the Lord on my soul in the Lord that's with me Bless the soul in your name Praise the Lord on my soul in the Lord that's with me Bless the soul in your name Praise the Lord on my soul in the Lord that's with me Bless the soul Remember our buddy John the Baptist we talked about? Remember that buddy we talked about? Jesus said he's the best man, greatest man born of a woman. John the Baptist said, that there's a baptism of repentance. He said, but there's one coming. His name's Jesus, and he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. How many of y'all want power to overcome sin for real from this point forward? How many of y'all want power to be a witness to your friends? Okay, so right, you want this? For real, you want this baptism? Because this, hey, this changes everything. You let this fire come, it changes everything. Y'all ready for this? If you're serious, raise your hands. Raise your hands and close your eyes and lift your eyes to Jesus right now. Say, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire. Say, and fire. Now just receive, receive, receive it. Lord, what is your fire right now? Yes. Leaders, if you want to help me, just start laying hands on everybody. Fire right now. Fire. Spirit of burning.
release your joy right now. There's a wave of joy coming right now. The oil of joy. The oil of joy. Fire fall down on us. We pray. Oh Lord, He's doing some deep work right now. Even if you don't feel anything at all, He's working out something so deep on the inside of you. Hey. Yeah, let him do it. Let him do it. He's coming like a refiner's fire. He's cleansing our shame, washing our guilt. Some of y'all have never had power to overcome that thing. Changes tonight. Some of y'all need a breakthrough in reading your Bible. The Holy Spirit and fire will take care of it. He's going to ignite passion, breaking off laziness and complacency.
I want the sound of your encounters to lead the room right now. Don't hold back. Let your tears flow. Let the cries cry out. Spirit. God, I'm asking, increase your presence right now. Increase your presence right now. I'm asking for another wave, God. We're asking you to kick it up a notch right now, God. Who here has not yet received their prayer language? It's something you've always desired. Raise your hand high. You haven't received your prayer language yet. Okay, look around. If you see someone next to you with their hand raised and you got your prayer language, just extend your hand towards them right now. Everything that we get from God is received by faith. Who believes with your hand raised that God can give you your prayer language right now? Well, I also want to tell you that he doesn't always just reach his hand in your mouth and start slapping your tongue around. So Holy Spirit right now, if you got your prayer language, just begin to pray in the Spirit. Right now, God, release him right now. Paul said, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. God, you see the desire. If, if us being evil know how to give our children good gifts, the word says, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Right now, some of you are going to pray in tongues right now for the first time. Don't, don't let the enemy convince you it's fake. Don't let Satan tell you it's fake. The Apostle Paul, the one who wrote most of the New Testament, said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. This dude had a high value for this gift. God, fill him with the Holy Spirit right now. If you just receive your prayer language for the first time, wave your hand like this. Wave your hand like this. No way, really? Come on. <laughs> For those who didn't receive, that's okay. Keep receiving, keep receiving. Keep receiving. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Focus on God. You ask Him. You ask Him. Your Father loves you. Some of you, this topic right here stirs up all kinds of wounds. Because you thought you weren't as spiritual as your friends. So it takes a lot for you to even respond to this moment because you're scared of getting let down. We break off the lies right now. You're worthy. You are worthy before God to receive this gift. He doesn't look down at you and say, yeah, you don't deserve it, but your friend does. He said, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He said, if you ask God for a snake, he's not going to give you a dog. Yes, don't quit now. Don't quit now. Listen to this beautiful sound of encounter all over the room. Oh, you don't got to tighten your fist and try to make anything happen. Just receive. I command every demonic spirit right now to be silenced in Jesus' name. Leaders, if you hear someone manifesting, you know what to do. We need some help. I just felt a shift come in the room to deal with some darkness. I just command every demonic spirit right now that's been tormenting and binding, and binding people's lives up right now. We bind every demonic spirit. Every demonic spirit that's held you back. Fire. 
freedom. I need some leaders right here. I know I'm putting y'all to work tonight. Sorry. Let it out tonight. Come out of agreement tonight. Shame. Self-harm. Suicide. Lust. The spirit of Jezebel. Go. Freedom. 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 The chain breakers in the room. Someone gave me a word earlier that they saw like a hammer. Well, there's a verse for that. It says, is not my word like a hammer, says the Lord. A hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. We take the hammer of God right now. We break up every stony spot right now. God, I'm asking for a radical corporate deliverance right now. That freedom is your portion. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Greater is He that is in you than he who's in the world. We're not playing with demons anymore. Fire right now. Fire right now. Fire. Hey. Hey. Also, any any of the any of the catch the fire leaders, you have full liberty to come up here and share words of knowledge. If you're feeling something, I'm only gonna feel and hear and see so much. I'm gonna need your guys' help. We're far from over. I find that when the Lord crashes in the room like this, sometimes it's like waves. And then it'll die down and then boom, it'll hit again. For some of you, it's deep freedom from sin tonight. From some of you, it really is demonic oppression done. For some of you, you're feeling loved by God for the first time. The beauty of the Holy Spirit is doing something different in each and every one of you. Jesus, we love you so much, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, we love you, we love you, we love you. You know, as we've been standing here praying, I feel like God really saying like, there's so many of you that have been looking for love, who have felt alone in this world. And it's like you've been looking for love in all the wrong places, in the world, in your jobs, in your friends, in your hobbies. And you've come to this point in your life where you're like, it just isn't enough. It doesn't meet what I need. And you know, God's just there watching and he's like, choose me, pick me. I'm more than enough. I will always be more than enough. You don't have to look for temporary happiness or temporary love. I'm permanent, I'm eternal, I'll always be there. I'll never back down. I'm always cheering for you. I'm your cheerleader. So if there's any of you that have been trying to find love in all the wrong places and you just want that full love, that eternal love, the love that conquers everything, the love that won't let you down, the love that's always going to be there for you, 
I want you to put your hand on your heart. If that's you, put your hand on your heart. And I'm not going to pray for you. You're going to pray for yourself. I want you to invite Jesus into your life. Genuinely, truly invite Jesus into your life. Think of all the, the places, the times where you felt like it wasn't enough. I didn't get loved. I didn't feel love from my parents. I didn't feel love from my friends. It just wasn't enough. And invite God into those places. Say, Jesus, I want you. I need you. I love you. Jesus, we invite you in this place, God. We invite you to invade in the hearts of these youth, the youth that have been suffering, the youth have, that have felt lonely or been in despair or felt unloved, unwanted, unworthy. That you speak love, you speak peace, you speak truth into their life, you speak identity into their life and you fill those places of their life, those places of their heart that have been cold, empty, missing with your love. A love that is like no other, a love that conquers death, a love that conquers everything. We invite you and we ask that you fill us with your love, with your peace. Yeah, Jesus, we invite you. We invite you in this place. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9, says that one glance from your eye ravishes the Father's heart. For those in the back, for those that are wondering, why am I not feeling, whatever your situation is, I want to remind you today, if you want to know how much God feels about you, it says that Song of Solomon 4, 9, one glance from your eye ravishes the Father's heart. Every time that you remotely take a step towards God and even just look at Him for a moment, turn your gaze to Him for just a moment, it says that His heart is ravished. I break off shame right now, comparison right now. Those that are in the back feeling nothing, another night of not feeling anything, I break off lies over you right now. Some of you even have been in these settings so many times and you don't feel, and you wonder, man, is there something wrong with me? Like, am I just so hard that like I can't feel God? I just wanna break that lie off of you right now. You can't be any closer to God than you are right now. Ephesians chapter 2 says that it's His blood that brought you near. 
Your faith in His blood has brought you as close to God as you could possibly be. Worship team, why don't you guys whatever, maybe pray for a second, whatever. Just lead us out in some sort of song. Lead us out in a song, whatever you feel led to do. And then we're going to release the worship team. And then the room can just swirl out all night long. All right, so whatever you guys might be feeling, take some time to think about it. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never Tonight gonna is proof. let me down. He's never gonna let you down. You're never gonna let, He's never gonna let never you down. Gonna let me he might not do it at the timing that you want, you're but he's not gonna let you down. Let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let never gonna let me down, no. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Some of you you're leaders need this song. Let, God touched your teens tonight. He's not gonna not hear your prayers. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let
They ain't gonna let you off the hook yet. Come on. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good. Oh, you are good.
Jesus, yes, Jesus. Thank you for being in this place, God. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord, in the past couple of days, God. We love you. We love you so much. And we praise you. We adore you. You deserve all of the glory, God. You deserve all of the glory. And through you, through you, we can see the impossible being done. In you, we have faith. In you, we find love. In you, we find peace. And you conquer everything. You conquer the impossible. And Jesus, even as this conference comes to an end, even as we leave this building, even though you've created so much change in us and you've done so much for us, we want to now take that to the next level. We want to take that into our schools. We want to take that into our families. We want to see the impossible being done outside, in our schools, in our workplaces. We want to see that. So God, we put complete faith in you. We trust you and only you. We don't want to do life without you. We don't want to do things our own way. We want to put our faith in you. So God, tonight, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you. Let's give Jesus one, let's say Jesus really loud, like you really, really mean it. Are you guys ready? All right, get all the air you can inside your lungs. We're gonna scream Jesus as loud as you can. Are you ready? One. Two, three. We give you all the praise. Oh, if you set us free today, we'll dance in joy. Oh, I put off all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn my night into day. Put off all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn my night into day. I put off 
Sad to say, but fresh wind is now over. Um, I hope you guys had a blast. Can't wait to see you next year. Jesus loves you. <laughs>